Well, hello. Let me tell you that I've been waking up pretty much every hour <laughs> throughout the night and finally got the message that I'm supposed to start at 3.33 this morning since that marks completion. 3.33 is 9, marking completion. Yesterday, I filed with the court in Brevard County, Florida, my affidavit in regard to their judgment in open court, the order filed in open court on April 27th at 10.51 a.m. I'm going to read at least portions of that to you, and it will be posted on my, on my website later today at some point, perhaps right after I finish this. And I'm going to need to make some further comments on this tomorrow. I'm sure there will not be time to do it today. In fact, it will probably be a longer video today than, than my normal 15 minutes. Uh, so I ask you to bear with me, and this is important information in, deal, in dealing with a court and dealing with an unjust um, decision made by the court. I'm reading now from the document itself. Affidavit. These are facts I know to be true. I. Ronald Thomas Van Dyke am a natural living man, sentient soul, secured party creditor, and a sovereign free man un on the land under common law. I am part of the Republic for the United States of America. I am not a citizen of the corporate USA or any of its corporate affiliates or sub-agencies. Number two, Admiralty Courts operating under commercial law have no jurisdiction over sovereigns without consent. And for me, that consent has been denied repeatedly by affidavits, which the above court and its officers have never rebutted on and for the record. All jurisdiction of such courts extends only to the straw man, which is a legal fiction and not a real human being. Number three, truth maxim number three. In law, an unrebutted affidavit is the ex executed judgment in commerce. Except for a jury, it is also a capital fatal offense for any person, even a judge, to impair or to expunge without counter affidavit any affidavit or any commercial process based on affidavit. Number four. I, the natural man, took ownership of the straw man, created in the facsimile of my birth name by the state at the time of my birth. I hold lawful and legal power of authority over any action relating to that legal entity in any and all matters. 5. On April, in April of 2010, I filed with this court, the state of Florida, and the National Republic Registry, a State of Florida Uniform Commercial Code financial Financing Statement form with numerous attachments. In this form, a legally binding document known as the UCC-1, I took lawful and legal possession of all property listed in that document, including my homestead, which is also a spiritual center that the above court is threatening to sell at auction next month at the bank's request. Number six, on page 18 of that document, it is recorded, quote, this privately held security agreement in hand cannot be discharged in bankruptcy court or any other court 
as holder's property is exempt from levy. It then cites legal references. Continuing, all proceeds, accounts, and orders therefrom are released to secured party creditor. Number seven, on page 19, which is a legal notice and demand and a contract in admiralty jurisdiction, it is written in paragraph two, quote, this notice is in the nature of a Miranda warning. Take due heed of its contents. If for any reason you do not understand any of the statements or warnings, it is incumbent upon you to summon a superior officer, special prosecutor, federal judge, or other competent legal counsel to imme immediately to explain to you the significance of this presentment as per your duties and obligations in record or in respect to this private, formal, notarized, registered, statute, staple, securities instrument. as per Title 11 of the U.S. Code, and then it lists a bunch of laws, and Federal Rules of Civil Procedure sections, and it gives the sections, the claim or presumption that I, Ronald Thomas Van Dyke, am a debtor to the United States or any of its agencies or subcorporations is forever rebutted by this contract. This rebuttal is a counterclaim in admiralty. Number eight, from the same page, paragraph five, quote, I, the undersigned, now tendering this legally binding legal notice and demand in hand, am not a surety under your jurisdiction, nor a subject under your corporate veil, color of law venue being acknowledged by silence and acquiescence of Kurt S. Browning, respectfully Florida Secretary of State, but also but not limited to any public officers, agents, contractors, assigns, employees, and subsidiaries of your office regarding my legal notice and demand tendered by certified mail with Lieber book number and page affixed, end quote. Number nine. When I attempted to file the affidavit of recording with the clerk of court office in Brevard County, Florida, my one-page filing was refused by the court, although the UCC-1 had previously been accepted by the court as part of this case. A subsequent letter from the court indicated that it had, quote, no authority, end quote, to process my document which was being filed as a free man without reference to any open court case. This fact was included in my unrebutted affidavit of May 28, 2010, in which I rendered my final sovereign judgment. No authority means no jurisdiction. Number 10. From my perspective, that final sovereign judgment was accepted by the court on June 4th, 2010, when a judge removed the trial, when the judge removed the trial from the docket by canceling the scheduled, quote, date certain, end quote, trial. I rightly claimed victory in protecting myself and my property as a sovereign and a free man on the land. Number 11. In my affidavit from January of this year, I pointed out to the court information from the 4th District Court of Appeals in the state of Florida to the effect that the original promissory note is required as a duplicate of a note is not admissible if it is a negotiable instrument. Again, this affidavit was not rebutted in writing on and for the record, nor could it be. Promissory notes are negotiable instruments. No copy can have validity. All copies are counterfeit, just as photocopying $100 bills would be counterfeit. Furthermore, 
no legislative pronouncement nor court decision has any validity in truth. Therefore, any attempt to overwrite or override a common sense law is nothing more than fraud. Number 12. The affidavit to reestablish lost note from the state of Ohio and signed on April 7, 2011, plainly admits that PNC Bank was unable to locate the note and therefore submitted a true and correct copy of the promissory note, which the court fraudulently used as if it were an original, recording it in the official record book 5517, page 4328 in the public records of Brevard County, Florida. Number 13. As I said in my affidavit from January of this year, quote, all information available in the public record indicates that there is no lost note in this case. The note was simply sold according to standard banking procedures, discharging the note at the time of sale. In other words, it was paid in full when the note, as an executable instrument, was transferred to any other party or parties. To declare it lost is incredulous and part of the overwhelming scam in the commercial banking sector of our world at this time. Therefore, any ruling to resolve or to restore the note using copies is fraud on and by the court, and I retain the right to prosecute any and all parties involved in and attempting to perpetuate such fraud, including the corporation known as the Circuit Court of the 18th Judicial Circuit in and for Brevard County, Florida. Number 14 that the mortgage executed by Ronald Van Dyke, my straw man, in July of 2005 has no legal standing, has been asserted by other attorneys involved in this matter for reasons stated in various meetings and in written responses in relation to this case. I too have given numerous reasons to the court by affidavit why there was no valid contract. To my knowledge, None of those affidavits of mine or any of the assertions of the other attorneys in this matter was ever addressed by the court in writing and on the record. The silence of the court either constitutes agreement that said mortgage is null and void or complicity in fraud. Number 15. It is well known throughout this land and around the world that the banking industry has been systematically defrauding human beings of their natural rights as sovereign men and women for a long time. While this fact is not yet admitted by all, those who know the truth are increasing exponentially on a daily basis, despite the continuing whitewashing by most politicians and most mainstream media. Number 16. Any attempt by any officer of the court, any code or law enforcement officer, any auctioneer, or any other person to facilitate the auctioning of the property at 473 Thomas Drive in Brevard County, Melbourne, Florida, without my written consent as a secured party creditor, is committing a felony. Number 17. Fact. De jure grand juries are back and seated in the Republic of Florida. Larry Elliott Clayman, an American attorney and activist, is the founder and former chairman of Judicial Watch, a public interest and nonprofit law firm. In an interview posted on Congressman Ron Paul's website, he talked about the Supreme Court ruling in the United States versus Williams in 1992. Quote, Justice Antonin Scalia, writing for the majority, confirmed that the American grand jury is neither part of the judicial, executive, or legislative branch of government, but instead belongs to the people. It is, in effect, a fourth branch of govern, government, governed and, administrated and, and administered to directly, by, and on behalf of the American people, and its authority emanates from the Bill of Rights, end quote. 
Kleiman said that founding, the founding fathers wanted the grand jury to not be part of the judicial branch, and they wanted a route through which citizens could seek redress of their grievance without having to ask permission of the state, as the state will nearly always seek to protect its own established interests. Quote, Thus citizens, ordinary Americans, have the unbridled right to impanel their own grand juries and present true bills, which are indeed indictments, to a court, which is then required to commence a criminal proceeding upon which the accused has full constitutional rights to present a defense and seek to prove her innocence. Close quote. Kleiman said, quote, Importantly, even the federal rules of criminal procedure, which allowed which allow federal prosecutors to present indictments after a grand jury has issued them, comma, does not preclude citizens from so doing. Close quote. Grand juries are pivotal in keeping to keeping corrupt government in check. They are the ones that charge corrupt public servants with crimes. Again, that's from Ron Paul's website. Number 18. I have been told that any time a de jure grand jury is seated, it automatically, by law, takes precedence over de facto courts, which are nothing other than the legal arm of the banking cartel. As a fact, I do hereby invite the parties in this matter to bring their assertions before one of the seated de jure grand juries operating under common law and common sense, if it is felt they have a lawful claim. You have 10 days from filing date to respond to and or rebut the facts presented by this affidavit in this affidavit by submitting to me signed, certified, authenticated documents of the laws that rebut these facts point by point on and for the record under penalty of the law, including perjury. Otherwise, all facts ad are admitted by the court as stated. By affixing my sig signature here too, I acknowledge that I have spoken and established my truth without malice or intent to harm anyone in his or her natural person, while at the same time to establish truth in regard to legal fictions created by de facto institutions. Let matters of continuing fraud by the banks and their co-conspirators be denied now and forevermore. Let truth and justice prevail. Ron Van Dyke, free man, secured party creditor. There's also a fourth page which indicates a little bit of follow-up which I'll share tomorrow. I'm going to let that go for today. This is really, really, really important stuff and foundational for everyone in the world that is having their homes taken by the banks and the courts. This information should be made viral. It should go around the world and everyone that hears it, unless you have a, a vested interest in maintaining the status quo, everyone needs to forward this to others so that the world can become informed of this massive fraud that has been going on all of our lives and many lifetimes before but especially in our life it has lifetime it has gone out of hand so i'm going to close that before the 20 minute mark is up and i'm glad that i was able to share virtually the entire the the entire affidavit with exception of mentioning all the codes and laws that are included therein. Namaste. Have a beautiful day. And thank you for listening and for sharing this video. Bye. <laughs>